recording. There we go. Tonight, here we are on the mission, Tuesday, 8 o'clock on the dot. Somehow we got started on time. The wonderful AZMT Studios. And before I go on and continue tonight, let me I'm going to try to talk to the camera a little bit. I want to let you all know all the wonderful things that AZMT can do for you here. We have brought the mission here because it is the best place, in our opinion, to work through and work with a wonderful platform that's been putting on for the city for over eight years now. Uh, we've got uh, August 26th, Welcome to Arizona Part 2, a showcase coming up. Be on the lookout for that. But beyond that, we've got a wonderful website where you can place your brand and your product. We've got a store that could be available to you. Uh, radio play, live event play, interviews, all types of promotion right here at AZMT. That's www.azmt.com. ArizonaMixtapes.com. Now, Kid K, uh, Queen D, and the whole family here, Charlie, myself, we all look forward to servicing the Arizona hip-hop community. That's what we do. Uh, we provide great services at a nice price. So we hope everybody out there that's an artist that needs and wants a service will tap in with AZMT because that's what we do. We appreciate y'all checking us out tonight. Let me get over here so I can get a little boom. Ah, it's another night on the mission. It's actually cooler than usual tonight. Uh, a nice 95 as the sun goes down in the city. Please, everybody, relax. Let's try to take it easy as the summer heat bears down. Uh, I'm coming off a great weekend in Omaha, Nebraska. Thanks to D&D &D Entertainment, Double D Entertainment, for bringing me out to Omaha, Nebraska, where I DJed for the great Keith Mary, the most beautiful thing in the world. I had a great experience. Keith is still doing it on a high level uh, with all of his years in hip-hop. Still wild, still crazy as ever. The most beautiful thing in the world, Keith Murray. Uh, he's got new music, which was surprisingly good. Uh, sometimes our older artists, their new music doesn't hit as hard. I'm telling you, Keith Murray's new music is some of the best music I've heard from him, so I can't wait for his new music to drop. Uh, we had a great time. We got a little lit. Uh, he was very generous and gave me some great drops. Uh, and, we, you know, we piled around at a Best Western in Omaha, Nebraska. So the crowd was great. They really rocked with Keith. They really appreciated his uh, hits from all the years as he broke it down wonderfully. And let me turn myself down a little bit. Here we are. Now, we are at the AZMT Studios tonight. And like I was talking about, they've got great services here to promote your product, to promote your brand, fully functioning, beautiful website that you could have access to to service your product, uh, maybe even get involved in a store-like activity if that's what you need, with the ease and breeze of working with a reliable organization. Now, this is the mission. This is where we sit down to talk to the voices that uh, that you know aren't heard and and uh, you know the artists of Arizona that need recognition that need talking to and tonight uh, is a very special night to me uh, one of my inspirations since the first time I saw him perform um, and now he's got his compadre fat Mike back out with him we're going to talk about all those details tonight uh, as we welcome ill to the stage to the stage at the mission t-bones and fat mike also known as ill yeah, yeah it's happy to see you now i do before we get started i just want to make sure your microphone is near wherever the speaker is on your, on your system can we just put this as close as possible to wherever the sound comes out maybe mike, maybe mike can help yep yep just put that and you know we'll get it we'll get it right as it goes. I just want to make sure everybody hears you, T Bone. I want to make sure everybody hears you. Um, tonight we're talking to my special guest, Ill. Uh, let me let me make sure it's on. Is it was it clicked on? I want to turn it way turn it way way up. Appreciate all the love. 
Hey, well, I, I appreciate you, T Bones, and and uh, that's that's very big coming from you to tell me that tonight. I appreciate that. I think that was I did work that show, so very well it could have been me at that hip hop festival. Um, yep, that that was the night where uh, your performance really touched my heart because of your performance, but not only your performance, your friends, your family, your fans, the people that came out to support you. Uh, uh, it was a, it was a great performance and something like I've never seen before. Now to our listeners and our viewers out there, um, you know, T-Bones has a condition where he's in a chair and has trouble speaking. And if you haven't seen his performance, he writes out his entire raps and has them all sequenced to the beat, which we're going to talk about in a minute. I'm going to get to my notes so, I, so we can stay on point. Um, and his, his, his performance is, and, and, and even better now that he's added Fat Mike to the situation. When I first saw T-Bones, Fat Mike was, was somewhere else doing something else. We'll talk about that. But, uh, uh, you know, T-Bones' show is something like you've never, I promise you've never seen before. It's an, a completely original act. I've never heard or seen anything like it. And it really touched my heart because it must be a, uh, a great amount of work that goes in to you making and performing your hip hop. Let me get to my notes so we can stay on point. And then in, in between our questions, uh, you know, we'll talk to Mike and get his perspective on things. Um, and I'll, I'll try my best to go in order, T-Bones. And this is something, you know, um, I, uh, when, when did you start listening to hip hop? The first question. It started at an early age. I remember my mom always had either Spanish music or old school funk playing while cleaning the house. And nice. back then we only had vinyl records, so she had a crate full of them. One of the vinyls that I really liked was Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight. I used to listen to it daily. Nice. Another record that I used to listen to constantly was a vinyl that my uncle gave me when I was younger. It's called I'm Chilling by Curtis Blow. That's how I got the name T-Bone. The funny thing about it was for years I couldn't remember who sang it or the title name. All I remembered was it had the old Transformers cartoon theme in the beginning. Yeah. So I just googled classic hip hop songs that had that sample and I finally found it. Mm -hmm. I really related to the song because my real name is Tony and in one of the parts of the song Curtis says the name T-Bone then some percussion starts. Years later I found out T-Bone was his drummer so I thought that was a cool little fact that I didn't know. I added the Z to the name because there's a gospel rapper that has the name T-Bone. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I remember that record. I, I used to have that record in T-Bones. That, that was uh, I'm Chillin' with Curtis Blow featuring Trouble Funk. And T-Bones was the main percussionist in Trouble Funk. And that's crazy that that's how far you go back because that's an old record, T-Bone. Yeah. That's no doubt. That's an old record. Drop instant knowledge on it. Too, yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, I'm a, I'm an old head. I'm, a, I'm an old guy. Head. I go way back. I was here yeah. almost since the beginning. Not quite. Now, Fat Mike, where was where was your first uh, introduction to hip hop at? Where did you come in at on uh -huh. hip hop? Because you look like you might be a little younger, man. Uh, you know, I'm I don't thirty. Know. Uh -huh. You don't have to tell us. We just, <laughs> just say you're a little younger than me and T Bones. Let's just uh, say you're a little younger than yeah, me and T Bones. Yeah, I am. Um, for me, hip hop was. Hip hop was tricky because at first, you know, I was introduced to it with a lot of Dub C and Tupac, and we grew up together. So everything he did, I, we pretty much did together. But what actually fascinated me the first time was was uh, we went to a Tower Records, and we were cruising around. You know, we said, but it was it was literally an accident. You know, we left the store and we had while we were searching through the stores, a CD had fell in his where his feet are held at. Mm -hmm. And it had fell in between on the side. Uh -huh. It was the big pun endangered species CD. Okay. And this had, you know, it had a little bit of everything. And he a compilation of everything he did. Right, right. And uh, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, the pods, the dubs, every all, all that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
all those things, you know. Mm -hmm. But when I found Pun, which led me to Big L and cannabis, and and then he, uh, Red Man, and you know, we were the, we were the kids with all the the CD the CD booklets on the wall. Right, 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 you know right. right. You, you you looked at it as a you collected it. You know, very much. I had tapes and then records. Yeah. I was I collected those. You know, and they were to me and my friends. They were very valuable collectibles. You know, we loved uh, looking at the art. Uh, and even reading the back now, now T Bone, I apologize for that. That mic wasn't turned on, so I just want to, I just want to ask you that first question one more time. Um, when did you first start listening to hip hop? And please give us that answer again. I think we'll hear it a lot better it now. We just had a little technical. At an early age, I remember my mom always had either Spanish music or old school funk playing while cleaning the house. And back then we only had vinyl records so she had a crate full of them. One of the vinyls that I really liked was Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight. I used to listen to it daily. Another record that I used to listen to constantly was a vinyl that my uncle gave me when I was younger. It's called I'm Chilling by Curtis Blow. That's how I got the name T-Bone. The funny thing about it was for years I couldn't remember who sang it or the title name. All I remembered was it had the old Transformers cartoon theme in the beginning. So I just googled classic hip-hop songs that had that sample and I finally found it. I really related to the song because my real name is Tony and in one of the parts of the song Curtis says the name T-Bone then some percussion starts. Years later I found out T-Bone was his drummer so I thought that was a cool little fact that I didn't know. I added the Z to the name because there's a gospel rapper that has the name T-Bone. Well, okay, well, let's. I think you alluded to it in that answer, but the second question is who turned you on to hip hop? Because for a lot of us, it's an uncle, an older brother, sometimes their parents if they're younger. Um, but who, so who turned you on to hip hop? I started writing music when I was 12 years old. I'm 37 now, so I've been writing for 20 years. I remember in grade school me and my friends started making goofy rhymes about the teacher or whatever in the classroom. Then I started to make little songs about how I felt at the time. <coughs> A lot of my early material was darker and yeah. closed minded especially when I was in high school. I learned through the years that I can't work a regular job. So music became my passion and a voice to express myself. I really got inspired when I started getting royalties. It's not much but I'm saving up for a new studio. I started releasing my music officially in 2019 through the distribution company called DistroKid. Uh, very good, very good. So who were, um, and you know, who were some of your early favorites? You mentioned some. Who were some of your other early uh, favorites? There's a quite few that influenced me. Actually, I talk about it on a song called Master of Ceremony. It's about all the hip-hop artists that influenced me. Go check it out, it's one of my favorites. There's a lot of artists that I didn't get the chance to mention on the track. Like J. Cole, Gangstar, KRS-One and others. But I would have to say the major influence that made me want to rap was the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> I didn't hear them until their second album. But when I first heard the Wu-Tang Forever album I was hooked. I remember hearing that album every day. I was about 12 at the time so I had to finish my homework first. Wow. 
I never heard nothing like that. They combine two of my favorite things, which is rap and martial arts movies. Oh, okay. And their style is different. I always thought they're like the Shakespeare's of hip hop. Mm. Another big influence of mine was Big Punisher. Mm. He was mm. the first Latin rapper to go platinum and his lyrical content was always fire. I really admire the artist Tech 9 okay. because he came up on top doing it on his own independently. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to a little bit of everything from my mom playing those records so that kinda influenced me to mix different genres of music especially on my latest album. I'm a big fan of heavy metal music too. The aggression of it helped me with a lot of anger in the past. Bands like Korn and Slipknot really helped me through high school. I related to their lyrics and the anger that they had. I get it. I understand. Um, w w let's speak to Fat Mike about what, what you, were your early influences similar? Where did you come at it, hip hop? And before you begin, I must say, has anyone ever said you, you resemble a young Fat Joe? Ugh, all the time. All the time you get that? You do? You resemble I, I, a young Fat that, Joe? I hate that it's Joe and never pun, though. You hate that it's Joe and that pun. Joe and well, you can rap. I hope you rap like pun. Like you can rap like, like pun, but you look a little like you resemble <laughs> Joe a little bit. But but who did you come into hip hop really admiring early um, on, or who you? To be honest, like like for real, for real, pun is the first. I'm telling you that all my memories are vivid. That's how I mentally get rid of all my enemies and spirits that definitely mimic my every melody. And that right there was mm -hmm. impressive to me. Right. You know, dead in the middle of little little little. <laughs> it was different. Right. It was different from. Everything the West, you know, Brother Lynch, Brother Lynch, and um, you know, Tech Nine and all that. That stuff was cool. Mm -hmm. But where I in my mom's house, you know, where I I was more of an R and B. R and B was always playing on those Sundays. See, right. we lived about three blocks from each other. We lived on the south side. Y'all cousins or just friends? Cousins. Actual blood yeah. cousins. But okay, I wanted to, I wanted his, to highlight that y'all are cousins. Yeah, but you know, his mom kind of raised me. So, okay. So, you know, it's it's more back, like brothers, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, we grew up together. So, watching him, you got it. So, I'm I'm about 4 years younger than him, so 3 years younger than whatever. Watching him write all the time. I used to go help. We used to sit and go. It was a long is I just for me, that's why I appreciate you so much. I I, I know you're going you're going to get to later but me being gone, you had you know, giving him a platform because I understand that to a ignorant ear to somebody who doesn't know because this is unprecedented yes. it hasn't been done yes. so if our music comes on and you don't know us from nowhere and you hear him come on you're not going to know what's going on right because it ain't i understand that so right. i'm trying to address that it's easier when you see it because you can kind of understand what's happening but even then to some people that don't understand technology mm -hmm. they they still might not get it but it, it that's why i like to drive home the message of uh how important the specialness of it is and how important all the work that T-Bones puts into it is because I see a lot of rappers that uh, feel uh, entitled, uh, feel privileged, and they don't, you know, nowadays that it's easier for everybody to do rap, more and more people feel entitled and privileged, mm -hmm. and they have attitudes sometimes, and these guys are not working near as hard as T-Bones, and so that's why he is my inspiration, my motivation. When I feel like I need to take a shortcut or I'm tired or don't want to do something I need to do, I feel I think of you, my friend. I think of you, and I think of how hard you work to to, to to have your voice and to get your art out, and it's very inspiring and motivating to me. I just want to emphasize No, go that. ahead, say that. I just, just want to emphasize it. because it ain't just that I, wanna, I want people to know how much work it is because he, he writes all the time. I need you to know that his mind is absolutely the ser what cerebral palsy is. Right. Like what what it what it what it the different stages it has and how it's affecting him. You got to understand that his mind is completely capable. Like he's 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 yes. he's such a genius. He he went to school for years. He has his audio engineering. He you know he he for <laughs> I was gone for fourteen years, man. I was in prison for fourteen years. That That's whole a long time, stretch. That's a stretch. I had got the studio we're working in now in two thousand and six. 
So, and that's what I'm recording. And, and we're, of course, I'm having issues. And, you know, it's only been, you know, uh, a little over half a year that I've been trying to get this thing going and, and right. being able to invest and pay bills. <laughs> you it's know, these Life things. is real. So that's, yeah, that's you. you know, but so we're trying to invest in a sound. We're trying to make, we're trying to make his sound and my sound, you know, more, uh, uh, more friendly. And we know our mixes and, and all that's not, but that's just what it is. Right. It's right. raw like, with this TikTok thing. I'm, I'm showing the whole journey, man. Right, right. You know, well, that's a wonderful like thing. And uh, I'm happy you're home. Congratulations. Yeah, I hope we can you. do everything, you know, yeah. to, to, to stay home. I know you want to. I know T-Bones wants to have you here. Right. Um, while we're talking to you for one second, maybe you could speak to um, – y'all came up like brothers. You were gone for 14 years, but y'all came up together. Could you speak to – how hard maybe it is to see, to see your brother, you know, the struggles he had to go through in life. Or... We grew up in South Phoenix. Between 17th and 19th Avenue and Southern. Currently I live on 12th Place and Southern. I have a song called South PHX on my first album where I talk about growing up in the area. The first line of the song says, I remember rolling down the block till 6 o'clock that's when the street lights came on. So you know when that happens you better get in the house. <laughs> it was rougher back then especially in the 90s. It's been through changes throughout the years so it's not as bad. My mom raised me and my sister on her own so we always been close. And Mike being my cousin we always been like brothers. He used to live with us on and off so I'm gonna let him say what his experience was like growing up. Okay. Um, like I said, his mom, his mom had, you know, raised me, you know, mm -hmm. so anybody to speak towards any type of, you know, lifestyle that, that's glorified on a daily basis as far as being, understands, you know, you from the south side, the west side, it don't matter what it is, but, you know, those situations led to, you know, being, being, uh, being loved and cared for by, by, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is my, my, my father's sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm son, you know, and her daughter, watching his daughter's older than him, Andy, Thea, Mom, I know y'all, mm. I love y'all, um, it's hard to explain, man, you know, because there was so much, and then you, and then you watch, you gotta, you gotta watch, you know, because you can't be all there, and then, and then you, the sh I got to watch it all, man, you know what yeah. I mean, yeah. to see him now, that's why I just, I try to post him as much, and I tag him as much, and I, you know, I had got shadow. It's, it's a whole, but I need people to listen because, to me, I tell him all the time, his, his, the most incredible part of his artistry for me is his storytelling. Like, if, once we get past the initial shock, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and then get into whatever, and then you start to listen and understand. So, this is a preface for me, like, this, this, should, like, thank you again, man, uh, for all No, things. no, thank you guys for but, coming. I just want to say for our listeners, and so everybody understands what needs to be understood, um, and I, 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 I don't let me speak out of turn, but some things I might ask you, uh, maybe I didn't get all the questions to T-Bones to in time, but if I'm correct, T-Bones, you, you have cerebral palsy, yeah. CP. Yes. Yeah, I heard you mention it in one of your songs that really touched me, and we'll speak on that in a moment. Yeah. But um, so uh, for the people out there, uh, cerebral palsy, I've been reading up about it today, is a condition that affects people in various different ways from mild to severe. Um, you know, and it's about your, your brain being affected and not being able to properly control your muscles. And so, you know, we, we've um, certainly most of us have been to school and interacted with people that might have CP in life. And um, uh, no offense, but T-Bones, you know, yeah, has it on the severe. You have a bit of the severe. But like Mike was alluding to, your mind is crystal clear. It's just your muscles and your physicality that's affected. And, and I can tell by your lyrics that are, are deep and thoughtful and full of emotion and spirit. You know, I can tell by your lyrics. Um, 
You had a song I listened to where you spoke of your CP and not being able to have a son and, and certain other things in life and what that, how it was affecting you and what that meant to you. And I think it was called What If. You have a song called What If. <laughs> uh, and uh, if, for all the people that maybe want to get a quick flash of, of, of your, your poetry and your life, I think that song like brings it home very fast. Um, and it's very heart touching, very emotional, very, um, because you, you tell the truth and you, you let it all hang out. You know, you, 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 you put it on the table for everybody to hear. And that's, that's what we ask for, for our hip hop artists. And, uh, and you, you definitely give that to us. So, um, I guess I'll ask Mike this because I didn't prep this question. So, has uh, so T Bones has been in this pretty much condition physically his whole his life, entirety. right? Yeah, you, you have something for that, T Bones? You can feel I'm free. I'm glad you asked this question because okay. I want people to be aware and help them understand. And I talk about my disability often in my songs more noticeable on the track called My Shoes. My disability is called cerebral palsy. I wasn't born with it. I got sick when I was three months old, and the doctor found an infection in my brain. There's a couple of different forms of it, but I forget what they affect. But my form of cerebral palsy affect my muscles and motor skills. For the longest I let it get me down, but music helped me express myself especially when I started to record with a computer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that was a big thing for you when you, when, cause technology has come a long way in the last 20 years. And uh, now you can do so much, uh, and that's incredible. And you you take full advantage. You do a lot with what you and with leaps what you know. and bounds from right. the beginning. <laughs> right from right. the beginning, the first that first block thing that we put that they had that they got it was a, so simple. But the idea, this is again, this is his idea, man. Right. His writing, his he did all this, and and of course it got harder. And then we and then I got to do Pro Tools. We got to play. We got to chop it. Right. Now he has a whole, and each every time he advance, he he finds another way to, to to keep making it. And it's just so, I can't wait to show. Like, don't get me like I, I promise you, I'm gonna show you guys. It all. <laughs> You're gonna see it all, man. <laughs> TikTok is just the beginning. Thank you guys. I know you guys are here. A lot of people are telling me. I know that man. Thank you guys for coming. Well, you know, you should be a, a motivation, an inspiration, not to people with dis- not just to people with disabilities, but to everyone because. You know, human, the human life, Y'all, t- you spoke about growing up in South Phoenix, which I've heard and know from stories people have told me, that growing up in South Phoenix can be tough enough. And then to grow up in South Phoenix with a disability, you know, it's, it's got to be so tough and just another world of issues and problems. Um, and I'm so happy that you found music. And uh, I've got a, with it, I've got a, I've, well, I've got a, my friends in a heavy metal band I want to turn you on to. And I'll send you the info through Facebook um, so you can check them out. He's uh, he's actually got a uh, a hip hop indie deal and he's got a heavy metal deal both. He so he's really doing it. I want to hook you up with him. So we talked about where you grew up and what it was like growing up there. A shout out to South Phoenix. Um, we're north of the city right now. Um, when did you begin to take it really seriously? R- w- number six, when did you begin to take rap very seriously? And maybe who inspired that? Because a lot of us rap from here to there, a little bit this and that. And we all have, a lot of people have rapped in their life. But not everybody decides to take it seriously. Mike inspired me to mm. take it serious. He told me to switch my style up from all the dark lyrics. That's when I started to be more versatile and more mature with my writing. He's one of the best lyricists and always makes me step up my game. I went to Phoenix College for audio production. From there, I learned how to record, mix, and master. My mastering game is not that great. I always think I should have done this and that. I remember when I first recorded with my first talking device it was on a microphone at my college. 
but it was too muffled and sounded horrible. Then one of my teachers said I could plug an aux cord into my computer, then the audio would go into the interface, mm -hmm. and goes to the recording program that you're using. Normally it takes me a week to write, record, and mix a song. But some of the songs are more difficult to mix because of the arrangement. It's like putting a puzzle together, finding which parts fits, or take the parts that doesn't fit out. My favorite part of mixing is messing with the effects like EQ and reverb. I try to experiment with the effects on my looks, try to make them stand out more. We usually use an old version of Pro Tools to record all the music. But Pro Tools stopped working couple of months ago so we've been using an old version of GarageBand. The equipment that we use is so old that it doesn't have the internet. <laughs> but it still works and serves its purpose. Hopefully we can upgrade in the near future. Yeah. Yeah, well, I understand that. With mixing and mastering, is tough for me because I never know when I'm done. I feel like you can just keep working on it for days and days and hours and hours. And uh, there's another thing you write about. All of that equipment works. You shouldn't let it stop you using old equipment, this equipment, that equipment. All of that equipment works and works fine these days. So there's no reason to let that slow you down. I appreciate that. But, yeah, mixing and mastering is tough for me that uh to do that too now so you kind of spoke to it there but how did you i'm amazed at the fact that you um not only record uh, your lyrics but you have them synced up to the beat so well that's a whole mystery to me um so number nine kind of how did you learn to how did you learn to put your music together so well Like I said, I plug an aux cable into my computer, Okay. then it goes through the interface, and goes through the recording program that we use. As far as my writing process goes, I usually write my verses first. I hate writing hooks for my computer, I usually write them at the end cause I can go off the verses and think of a name for the song. I've had a couple of communication devices that I recorded with throughout the years. I think my current one is the best so far. It lets me to be more creative and it's easier to mix with the songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, respect and salute to you because uh, um, it, it, it can't be it can't be easy. It must take a lot of work. But a, a surprisingly, a week a week to do a song is not that bad. That's pretty fast. That's pretty quick. Um, I know other people are slower than that. Uh, I, I asked the question: When did you and Fat and Mike start working together? But I get the feeling that's been a lifelong thing. But yeah. go ahead and let's hear the answer to that question. Then we'll get Mike well, to add. Well, growing up in. together, we always been close like brothers. We started rapping together around 2004. We started ILL around 2005 with our friend Sticky Tones. Shout out to him man. He's been doing the family thing and holding it down for his family. Also shout out to his brother Mario. He produced a couple of my tracks. We had a couple of meanings for the name ILL. But I thought infinite loyalty to lyricism sounded better and fit with what we're about. I'm gonna let him tell the story how he got his studio and how I ended up with the equipment. <laughs> well... You know what, man? I don't even want to. To be honest, man, it was just I, I don't want it. I don't want there to be any misconceptions. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um. You know, I I, I worked hard, man. You know what I'm saying? I was a full time student. I um I was renting on a house. You know, I, I, uh. 
I was doing everything I could, you know what I'm saying? And the music was huge for me, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, uh, my passion for it because mm -hmm. when writing for me, you know, I can't, it's not even, <laughs> doesn't even compare, you know, as far as what it does for him to me. But, you know, that was everything, you know, because it was different, it, you know, mm -hmm. just. <laughs> but I ended in a position where, you know, it costs money to make money, man. Yeah. You know, especially here, there is no, there's there's not a bunch of yous around here. People aren't looking for or seeing something and going and reaching their hand out, you know. And if it is, it's, it's, usually, it's usually toxic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the little bit of running around I did and performing, you know, the old famous Sam's and the loft and the fish pubs and all that stuff, you know, I I, 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 try, I chased it all down, man. The, the, the college, all that, you know, but like I said, it takes, it takes, you know, and, and so shit, shit be hard, you know, and and you come from a like, where that's that's just product. That's just is what it is, you know. That's how that's what comes to you. So, uh, you know, it only takes once. So that's why I'm not trying to. I just want y'all to know I, I I'm heavy preaching this to, especially a lot of my my younger friends and and homies or or family and my little cousins, you know, because I you you, you couldn't imagine what changed over the last so many years, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not just Peter Pipers and shit and fucking everywhere and fucking mm -hmm. housing, you know, not just that, but breaks in families, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So many so many relationships fractured and different and the way people speak and talk are different. Mm -hmm. People that you call family, you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? And then there's so much ambition, expectation, you know, not, insp not only for myself, but, you know, there's, you know, there's there was so many other things that I'm I'm not gonna you know but you know you want it so bad sometimes you know you mm -hmm. know and you just you're willing to go do anything to get it and it's how I felt recently when I when I came home I felt like there was so much riding you know because you know I I come here and then my my mom's situation and everybody and my situation and, and to me you know there there's grandiose plans that I've been sitting I've been studying I've been working hard you know all these things I've been you know I've been writing you know you name it you know but, you know Mike Tyson say as soon as you get hit in the mouth it's different mm -hmm. as soon as I came home you know wave after wave of of, of it had me unsteady you know and I'm I'm out here pushing the best you could see it you know you could see I kept uh they, I'm you know. My son was, that right there was hard than anything else. You know, prison, I, I, don't, I don't, I try to tell people, or I told people in there, I did 15 years, okay, 15 years in prison. He's been doing the last 36 in his mind, in, in that chair, in that body right there, in his head. He's been in prison right there mm -hmm. in that body. For, mm -hmm. Every day, all day, 24-7 mm -hmm. to get up. He has to, he, that right there. And then what, when I, when I tell you, I'm, his entire life has been dedicated to this craft. Mm -hmm. So was so was mine. Yeah, except I lost, you know. Yeah. So to see you do what he's doing for me to push this, my son. I'm gonna bring it back to this. I don't want, I'm trying, I'm trying. So when I lost my son, <coughs> it was a couple months after. Uh, I think it was like four months after I got out, I lost my son for whatever. So I posted a video on TikTok because I, since I, from the day I got out was the first video I ever posted was that first day out over that T Grizzly beat. Mm -hmm. I did it. Boom. I went to the gym. I came out. I shot, shot the video. Video did pretty well. Boom. Whatever. Uh, that day at the hospital after the baby, I posted a video. I was screaming and crying. Whatever. Well, that video went viral. I, I started I started working at FedEx that day. That day that he passed, I started working at FedEx. <laughs> My mind wasn't at, I wasn't thinking about coming home or none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I, I, I'm, I'm a former addict, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't do drugs my entire life until the end of my bed. Like, you know what I mean? I was, but when I went, I went, I was, I was fully, it changed everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in that moment, when I got out, I come to get my phone out the locker and I went to go leave. You know, my son's over. I get out and I open the thing and it had 800,000 views in six hours. That, that video right there. It just, it took me by, the only way I could think of is that that's my son. 
You know what I'm saying? Because then it wasn't just that. I woke up in the morning, 1.6, and then all my music, all my videos started. Now, this is this is a transparency that I've had from day one when I put it out to I posted it. And since that day, I've been posting the same. I went, I went through an ugly little thing where you could see it. I'm not, you could, if you watch my content, I got about 600 videos. If you watch it, you could see that whole, pro, I look like shit, man. I let my shit go. I was drinking. I was like, I was, you know, whatever. But it was him, man. It was going to them shows with you. You know, you guys giving me uh, us them opportunities, other opportunities, going going to his house every weekend, making sure even when those job, you know, nobody wants to be 30, 30, and 30 years old and, and, you know, struggling. You know, you, I have no credential. I had no credentials. I don't have any discernible skill set. You know what I'm saying? You don't have two mm-hmm. pennies. You don't think. All I had was them. My mama, mm-hmm. I love you. Yeah. Pops and them, that's all, that's it. And this music is, so, you know, you get this, you get this platform, man, and you try to press it and press it. It's just, uh, I just want people to know what he's doing. Like, I want how he's doing it, how much time he's put into it. Know that we're working. It costs money, but we're working. The sound will be, it will be better. Mm-hmm. Once, 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 once I can afford production, that's, that's why you see all my product, it's, it's on TikTok, and I don't do Instagram like that. I don't do my YouTube channel. All that shit's up and ready to go, but I'm not going to push that content until it's a content worthy of mm-hmm. trying to, I don't want you to come buy nothing from me. My, my page is never going to turn to spam. <coughs> mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to give you full disclosure and let you know who we are, because when it comes, I promise you the music, you already know we're bar heavy. If mm-hmm. you don't know, for any listeners that you already know, I'm bar heavy, super bar heavy. You know, he, we come from that root. I come from ba- battle rapping is what made me. Mm-hmm. You know, the only reason I'm not battle rapping now is because I want my, I want my place in the industry, and mm-hmm. I'm coming to get it. I'm not even shy about that. When I talk to the people that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to enter, I'm coming for all that shit, man. My music is different. I haven't even let nobody hear it. I keep posting old prison raps on these TikToks. I ain't even let nobody hear no shit. The shit we're doing on this ILL shit, go get that test in me that we're, we're finna drop this little shit we're doing in this, this first preliminary little thing just to push out, which is doing, you know, we only put out two singles, but just know the sound is gonna be different. When I find out how to... <laughs> And push this and punch it, and I get a chance to show because TikTok is so disrespectful the way it exploits, what it exploits, and how it exploits. But that's everything. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it has to be given a chance. There has to be a way to get to an algorithm. You have to be consistent. That goes to every platform. People don't want likes. I mean, the platforms don't want likes. Anybody can tap the screen. They want interaction. Right. That's why I tell my people, every everybody. You know, those those comments, that's why I let all the people, the haters, there was 20-something thousand comments. You, would, you wouldn't believe the disrespectful shit people said right. about my child and, and me and just horrible shit. I, this is how crazy it is. I post my content. I post for hours on his content, editing videos and shit. I was on break the other day, and some I just I clipped a, 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 some of a, a, somebody was like, oh, tell me the worst black joke you ever heard. Mm. I'm at break. You know, I'm whatever. You know, content is hard. I'm posting four times a day. Mm-hmm. Most of that shit is, is goofy as hell sometimes. And right. It's hard. You know, Saturday Night Live misses half of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, because they push out so much content. Sure. So I'm pushing out. So, oh, ask me. About, okay, I stitched the video. 2.4 million in four right. days. This is, But this is the bullshit compared to when people are pouring their heart into content. Because mm. once you put on a link or anything like that that's, of you pushing yourself or selling mm-hmm. yourself, TikTok automatically pulls back because right. now your shit is spam. Now right. your shit is, right. and if you want us to promote your shit for you to make money, we won't. They want to promote it. They right. They, they want their cut. They want in for yeah. You know? They don't want anybody getting that money directly for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they've all changed and gone that way. Well, um, I, I I respect Mike how much work you're putting in, and 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 you know you're out here and. Uh, uh, I'm sorry for your son, first of all. You know, apologies for that, you know. Uh, a lot of hard times, a lot of tragedy, um, both of you guys, and, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, but un- unfortunately, good music a lot of times grows out of adversity, mm-hmm. you know. Um, good music grows out of bad times for a lot of people. And um, I feel like for you, T-Bones, music is, I mean, this is your outlet to the world, right? It's, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Let me get back to the script. Um, 
What are you guys, and either one of you can answer this or you can both speak to it, but what are your current goals in hip-hop? I think it was number 12. What are your current goals? I'm starting to learn about the business side of the industry. I think I have the music side down packed, but I'm still learning how to market myself and have more listeners. You have to watch out for the snakes that just want to take advantage of you. You have to make the right connections and meet people who you can trust. I want to get the ILL brand more out there, perform more shows, and make music that people can feel. I don't expect to get rich. If we make it big in time then hell yeah. I know it takes a lot more than talent to achieve that goal. If I still can make music and have an impact on people's lives then I'm good. My current goal is to upgrade the studio. I've been saving up and I'm almost there so hopefully next year. A quick shout out to Rome from 867 Entertainment. He booked us on his last tour. Hopefully we can make more connections like that with other promoters to do more shows. Uh, no Man doubt. Differs. My my goals differ. Okay, I speak to those. I fucking absolutely expect to get rich. I actually I know it for a guy for for a fact. I know it. That's why I tell him, see, see his I'm I write a lot of R and B. I can't sing very well, <laughs> but I haven't even got to play with the the, the auto right. I haven't even got to play with it yet. Well, another thing, you can sell those songs. You don't God, even have exactly. to sell them. You like know? I said, my, my, yeah. my aspirations are a little different. Like, for him, I'm trying to, the, his storytelling, like, the inspirational content, you know, I, it's, mm. <laughs> even though the talented, the mm. bar heavy, all that, like, for me, I'm, I'm I want mm. the billboard, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I, mm-hmm. I want, I know what I have to say. You know, I, I know that there's, there's a, there's sustenance in my content. Mm-hmm. In, in, in my music, his as well. You know, it's just right now it's, it's making giving them the sound, giving you guys the sound that's 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 worth it. Until then, I can't. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, thanks for Nip and 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 all the wonderful people that I've come. Keita Rock, man, thank you. You know, all the all the all the people who who gave me all this advice. You know, the you know that's got me <laughs> on my heels patient you know trying to be patient because don't get me wrong you know i no, i would love to you know be all over the city but i'm on parole man mm-hmm. uh you know what i mean i got bills <laughs> you know how long will it be before you'll be able to travel for your parole lightens up <laughs> uh the beginning of 2024 Okay. Hopefully. Not too bad. Not too hopefully bad. Hopefully a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully sooner. Before we continue on with T-Bones, let me speak to you one second. You know, I don't want to get deep into, um, you know, whatever got you incarcerated or your incarceration. But if you could speak to that transition, maybe you could drop a gym and help somebody out with those first. What was what was the most important thing to you the first couple weeks you were home? So when I got, when I first came home, all I could think about was, yeah, I mean, you know, because you, <laughs> you think about, oh, what I would, everybody's question is, what are you going to eat first? Mm-hmm. What are you going to eat first? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got something lined up? You got something lined like, yeah, up? You know, whatever. You know, all these little weird questions. But in my mind, all I could think about is that first day out video hmm. over that T Grizzly beat. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because I had contemplated over my, I got so much, you know, I got so much. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, I was contemplating, like, what what's going to be my first, you know? And I was like, well, I, why not, you know? But how, how did you come out of the, you came out of the ground, you, you hit the ground running with the TikTok because that was your first idea. Were yeah. you aware that somebody inside put you up on <laughs> what was happening in the world? Because it sounds like you kind of knew ahead of time a little I bit. St- <laughs> so I used to, baby, mm. I love you, baby. <laughs> mm. uh, I used to, uh, she used to, we used to be talking at night, you know, mm-hmm. doing our thing, talking you know, all the time. She would that would that that would be mm-hmm. her pastime, and I would make fun of her. You know, like yeah, TikTok, TikTok. Right. Sure okay. enough, I came home and you sure he told you about. But it. Uh, okay. as far as as far as what you were alluding to, what you're saying, I'm sorry. No, it's it's right. it's, 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 it's difficult right. because there's so many things, but all those disadvantages, you know, there's so many advantages too. You know, it's like right, it's like balancing your checkbook, liabilities and assets. 
Everybody has them in every in every situation. Sun Tzu's, you know, th those laws, they're so powerful. But every one of those things, regardless of how profound they are, they do not work the same in every situation. Application is necessary to everything you know, period. If you don't know, you can read books in a barrel, but if you can't apply that to the, situ uh, to the situation, it, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So when I came home, I got, I got, it was my sister's birthday. You know, I'm going to just tell this. It was my sister's birthday when I came home. When I, when I walked out, when I walked into the party, into the, I think it was a, a like a, a Peter Piper, uh, some pizza place. I walked in there. I was fine. I'm excited. I'm so happy. You know, I can't stop looking out the window. Everything, I'm still running into the new thing, but you know, everything is, you know, you're so happy, like, whatever. When I walked into that place and got surrounded like, like everybody, hey, hey, and the handshakes, people clapping me on my shoulder from behind. Like, there was so much. I had a, everything changed. That was my hit in the mouth moment. Mm. You know what I mean? Realizing, and then from grocery stores to, you know, public transport, just regular, the way people talk, you know, you it's it, everything is different. Everything is different, man. And, and <laughs> it, it's, it's going to be hard, man. It, it's not going to be, and this is for the people going through it. Because mm, I, yeah. I know people look at it and understand, you know, because people acknowledge situations all the time. But until you understand them, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought depression and anxiety was a crock of shit until I experienced it. You know what I mean? Right. I, 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 don't, know how, I don't know how to explain that to anybody else. But, you know, you come home with plans. But when I told you, you know, I had no credentials, I didn't. I had no, thank God I had family and people that helped me. There are people by the hundreds coming home every day in every city that come home to nothing, to halfway houses, no family, most likely addictions, such and so forth, mm -hmm. and they they find their way and push their way out of it. But every day is hard. You know, every 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 walk, every bus, every ride, every every time you have to ask somebody, being completely dependent is a mind in and of mm -hmm. itself. Especially for men. Exactly, yeah. because... Yeah. Being a prideful person and not being able to care, hearing hearing your family and not being able to to help it or appease it mm -hmm. is difficult. Yeah. So so and then you come out and now you have the opportunity and your mind's been so you're so excited to be like, man, I'm gonna go get this month, I'm gonna go make it happen and take care of everybody. And then you hit this six month and you hit this wall and you haven't progressed at all. Mm. And it and it you know you lost everything that was even. You know, and you're 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 trying to find this reason to not go back to that. You know what I mean? Because right. every and every argument or every whatever it was, it's always something. But <laughs> it's there's so many stupid inspirational things that you know, and I know it's super corny, you know. But there's so many things that I see or or go about in every day. But it was Tom Hanks saying, "This too shall pass." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was a there was a there was a night that I was up drinking. I think it was like three in the morning. I was drinking, drinking. I post. I, I even had like I posted on TikTok. I'm slamming the bottle in the you know. I'm I'm in the I'm in the, I'm in the closet at like three in the morning. Up, uh, you know what I mean? In there, what's it called? Watching TikTok, you know, whatever you know. And and I see him like this too shall pass. And it was insignificant in the moment, but when I woke up, I thought about it. Mm. You know, and there was. There's been this uh, learning curve for me trying to be a father, and and that's difficult because I'm still trying to figure out how to be a man myself. You know how how to stop being a child myself. When I tell you I've been dependent my whole life, I've been dependent my whole life. You know, I said I, I at 16 I went and got my GED, man. When I turned the day I turned 16, I went and got my GED. My mother went to Denver. I got my first apartment. I got I I, I got my GED that week and enrolled in Phoenix College where he was taking his audio engine, Jamie Weddle, thank you, changed my life. I, I wish I would have took the advice and all the blessings he gave me and ran with it and not, not because it was that moment where I collapsed before that sent me to prison is the same moment that I had that was, I had to realize I'm about to make the same fucking mistake I've been making all my life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I let tragedy or a misstep or <clears throat> I get so fucking... Um, so discouraged. You can curse. It's okay. okay. So discouraged. Mm. I get so discouraged by not meeting my expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, their my mom's whole situation. There's that everything that's going on right now. 
is a knife in the heart mm -hmm. to me every day, all day. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to explain to your, to your mom why you don't want to talk to her all the time she calls. Or when you go over there, you're not, it's hard to look at her. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, and then you, and then in all those moments, you find those moments where <laughs> you procrastinate or there's moments of indecision or you have those, I'm at job. I just did 12. I just got out of work. I just did a six. I just did a 12. I'm doing 12s. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get it all, bro. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> there's moments where that's not enough and it don't feel like it's enough. You know what I'm saying? And you just want to, I've been doing all this, and I've been, and I got nothing, and it's, that shit, and it gets worse for, <laughs> I tell everybody that when they have problems, you know what I mean, it's going to get worse. The young ones, I know that seems crazy, especially when, like, my younger family members, the, with love situations and all those things, troubles, parents, what, I know it sounds bad at the time, especially when you're so mad and upset, but mm -hmm. you need to know it's going to get worse. Right. But it's going to get so much better. Yes. And that's the message. It's life is a up and down. It's a roller coaster, man. And, and uh, for us all, you know, some of us are much bigger roller coaster than others. But we all feel sick, you know. No matter how big the bumps are, we all get sick from time to time. Um, what do you uh, and I? What do you guys? Whether it's you know, I had a friend that used to. He wouldn't drink. He claimed he got high off Coca Cola and Doritos. <laughs> And uh, people have candles and incense and, of course, drink and smoke in the studio. What do you guys vibe off of when, you, uh, when you're when you in the studio working? Some people, it's coffee. You know, you never know. Wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. I stopped drinking, but I still smoke weed. Okay. We used to party hard back in the day. I'm two years alcohol-free now. Mostly for health reasons, but I just got tired waking up feeling like shit. <laughs> Before I stopped drinking, I made a song called Drunken Words. Basically, it's about all the stuff that you want to say when you're drunk. I live by the motto when Nate Dogg said smoke weed every day. <laughs> I just love smoking blunts. Sometimes it helps me to write music or helps me relax my muscles. I can't handle edibles. They just hit different and I can't control it. <laughs> I get but it. with the blunt you can just chill and smoke. Yeah, that old school. I, I smoke weed. Yeah, I yeah. Smoke <laughs> weed. Oh, Everybody smokes you know weed. I'm That's learning agreeing. about a new form of weed every day. Yeah, that's fun. That's a good yeah. hobby. I, I I participate in that hobby myself, smoking and learning and learning and smoking. Um, number 15, I see on Facebook, it was very revealing right on time that your friend got you to, nominated you to, uh, to post 10 uh, groups that inspired you, that you liked growing up. And I noticed then that there was a lot of rock and rap mixed in that. Um, so, uh, number 15, when you, now that you make music, why do you make rap music and not rock, rock music? Rap just always been my thing, ever since I was younger. I didn't get into rock music, more specifically heavy metal, until I was in high school. Like I said, the aggressive of that music helped me with my anger back in those days. I like to mix different genres with my music, especially rap and rock. Bands like Rage Against the Machine and Linkin Park inspire me to make those kind of songs. I experimented a lot with mixing different genres on my latest album, The Twelfth Place Hits. That Genie song has an Arabian Nights vibe. I have a jazz fusion track called Rain It Down. I have a Spanish flavored song that I really like called Raza. That one is for my Mexican people and culture. 
And the last track has a rock blues vibe called Growth Tonight. Just being consistent with putting out more content. I love telling my life story, it really is my therapy. I like to make music for everyone to relate with. I like to be versatile with my stuff. All my albums sound different as far as the concepts and instrumentals. I like to make songs that have messages. I have one about toxic relationships, police brutality, and other current events. I also like doing fun tracks that inspire me at that time. Like my homage song for Wu-Tang called One Armed Swordsman. You already heard my mm -hmm. stripper slash porn song at our last show. Mm -hmm. I also have a song for the ladies mm -hmm. too. It's right before the stripper song on the same album. Mm -hmm. I even have a song where I find a genie and it grants me three wishes, which the song has a message at the end. So coming up with different ideas and concepts helps me keep going. I have a song called In Dreams, where I talk about being trapped in my nightmares. I got inspired to do it from being a fan of Stephen King books. I also have a three-part horror core series called The Alphabet Killer. I made up a fictional serial killer with an obsession with the alphabet, mm. and that came from being a fan of true crime stories. <laughs> the thing that I like about those is, each track has its own story, even the beats sound different but they all have the same vibe to the storyline. Hey, well I'll tell you, what he tells you that he was dark though back in the day. Though. <laughs> yeah, speak to it, Fat Mike, because you had to get him straight, you had to lighten him up a little bit. Hey, now, no, mind you, man. I understand... You know, I had some uh, times where I was pissed off in high school, mm -hmm. so I can only imagine that there was a lot of rage and frustration mm -hmm. dealing with high school and puberty mm -hmm. and all that, because it's hard on everybody, mm -hmm. just like life, but for your obstacles, much harder, for sure. So speak on that, Mike. Tell us about uh, the dark mm -hmm. days of T-Bones. Well, you know, the... <laughs> it's a... I don't know. Man, he used to write the craziest stuff, man. Yeah. You know, and and you know what? When I tell you, like, you know, for you brother Lynch fans and all, you know, it was on a whole different. He was you know, darker than brother Lynch because like, that's pretty dark. Like, don't bro. let don't let you be a teacher of his that mm. says some. You know, and then, you know, there's bullies and you know when I tell you he was fascinated when he's creating up serial killers and you know what I mean. You know that that but that became and then you know with the metal. I'm not a fan of metal music. You know, you know, I ended up when I got the studio at first and I started because that was the plan. You know, I'm like, oh, I got my audio engineering certificate. I'm going to open the studio, start selling studio. Man, musicians are broke. That's it. And I 14 grand. At, yeah. You know, that's, but, but uh, yeah, you know, and I would tell them because there would be the the other content and we would make other songs. and But it would, I kept pushing, you know, get off. Like, don't, you know, because, and then there was a lot of God hate, you know, hateful, you know, towards yeah. God. and. Sure. and you know, in that, everybody has their path, you know, and, and I, you know, I, 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 I always, the, the religious fanatics always, you know, especially, you know, argue that to him. Tell him, tell me what, tell him why, you know, your God is so great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> everybody has their, and don't, don't also, I, I don't ever discourage religion, you know. Right. I, I hate, I hate that it's been, inst you know, it's been used for such you know, ill game, but that's everything in the world. Sure. The church doesn't separate that. Right. The church is just one of the more powerful organizations. In the sure. World, I know? agree. I agree so, with you. So, so, you know, all those things, it's kind of like, I would, I would tell him, that's why when I told you a battle rap, I don't want to be in a box. I don't want him to be in a box. My, my visions of him are his song playing when the torch is getting parried at the Special Olympics. I want his video. I want, I want, mm -hmm. you know, I want him, I try to tell him, see, I'm, I'm an old, I'm an old rapper. I'm an old battle rapper. Like I'm one of these old, you know, all that. You know, every everybody's running words to get. You know, back then what I did was so original and creative. And then there's shock value to the way I look. 
now, man, if 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 you're a if you're far, people are man, they've got it's evolved so well. Of course, the mainstream stuff is a lot of, you know, is different. You know, the mumble mm-hmm. stuff and the bubble, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it, and it's prominent. You know, for but for the ones listening, looking in for the hip hop heads, mm-hmm. the bars are out there and the bars are different. So I'm no different from, you know, my story and 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 we're gonna see if the push makes me different. Right. That's why I keep. The push. That's what's next is the push. Mm-hmm. But but him, he's going to change the like the effect he's going to have. Especially, think about, hopefully not, but I hate to say it, but think about all the ones that's going to come. When I tell you this is unprecedented and it hasn't been done, think about how many people in his situation that don't have outlets, period, that don't have outlets. Or all just haven't have figured is, out the electronics. I think for a lot of people, they haven't figured out the technology the way you did. And uh, they don't know that they can sing and rap, you know. And once yeah, they figure yeah. out they can sing and rap, they, yeah. we, we, you know, it's about human experience. Right. And that's why I appreciate you sharing yours, T-Bones, mm-hmm. and you as well, Fat Mike, because hip-hop is big on sharing human experience, like right. I talk here tonight. And, uh, and you found a way to share your human experience, yeah. you know. And I think that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's incredible. Um, one last question, and then I'll let you both speak on whatever you want to speak about before we get out of here. But uh, the last question, I think I, ha- I I think I hit a little bit too much of the weed when I was writing some of these questions, T-Bones. Uh, I copied myself a couple times, and some of them weren't that creative. But anyway, this is one of the ones I usually ask people, especially for people in certain situations. When I got into rap, it was a bit odd telling my friends and family about that I wanted to rap or that I wanted to DJ. Uh, people didn't think maybe it was my place to do that. What was it like for you guys telling your friends and family that you wanted to be a rapper or that you wanted My to? family always supported me on whatever positive things that I do. A quite few family members were at my first show. I was nervous, but when I saw them rocking with the music, I started to get hyped. I'm close to my mom and sister. They're my biggest fans, I think. Mm-hmm. I made a EP called Family Issues. It's a small four-track project about my family. It really helped me through some things that I was going through at the time. My favorite track on that one is Unread Letter to My Pops. Before my dad passed, I didn't see him over 20 years, so it's basically a letter to him as a man telling him how I felt. In the process of his death, I met my two half-brothers. We met 20 years later after he passed, so I'm grateful for that. Man, that's heavy, man. Your story keeps getting heavier the more we get into it, T-Bones. What about you, Mike? When you now you were probably a younger guy, you know, when you were sixteen before you went away. What was it like telling everybody that you wanted to? Because uh, to be honest, some people thought I was crazy. They didn't want me to rap, or they thought I was crazy being involved in hip hop. What was it like for you, Mike? Well, I just want to, you know, I don't want to make it sound because you know that I don't want to put anybody out like it wasn't. You know, what I mean? but when I tell you, you know, it was just it was just my mama, man, and, yeah. and them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't have nobody else. So, right. You know, my mom ended up going to. It was going to Denver. She ended up getting a raise. She ended up moving to Denver. But, uh, I was still, of course, I'm a child. I had to wait till I was 16 to, to be able to get a GED. But you wanted to stay here. You stayed I, yeah, here. I, I, when I wasn't she moved, leaving. You I wasn't. Here. You know, I had yeah. these. You know, I wasn't leaving. Everything. Everything. Everything was. So. Uh, but. So when I did it. Everybody thought I was crazy because I had gotten to a, a car accident. I had broke my femur in half. I uh, mm-hmm. got bars in my all up my leg, whatever. Well, I ended up getting a settlement for that, but I wasn't gonna get it until I was eighteen. Mm-hmm. So you know that once once the once I broke my leg because of it, it was football at first, and you know that's what I want. I want to play football, but once I broke my leg and all that, you know I had been writing with him. I my when he mentioned Sticky. Sticky was somebody we used to, uh, me and him used to ditch class all the time. And, and at lunchtime, in Power 92, would come, we would always kick ciphers every day, me and Sticky. Boom, we would bust little ciphers. Uh, he lived in a real little reservation down there. We went to Cesar Chavez, and they, uh, the, the, uh, 
he the river uh, casino right there that, that have the reservation right there, mm-hmm. District Five and Six, I think it's right there. Um, but I used to go to the res with him all the time. That's all we did was rap, freestyle rap. We used to go to the Power Ninety Two battles. We did that. We, um, you know, that was whatever. But when when I turned sixteen, you know, I told my mom because she was like, "Well, look, you know, well, okay, if you get your GED, you get a job." You know, you have everything lined up in the next such and such time. If that by that time you do all these things, I'll co-sign your apartment. Man, what you think of? Me? I went and did that. I went and did everything I, that was necessary. Mm-hmm. I got my first little. Remember that little? It was a. Uh, mm-hmm. It was oh my god! It was on <laughs> by the behind the swap meet over there on Twenty Seventh Avenue in uh, Camelback, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! But uh, that was the first one. Uh, then I went to you know slowly but surely moving. I was working two jobs. I was working everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, trying to get it and doing other little things, trying to you know whatever. Um, sure. But when I got the when I got the settlement check, which is going to answer your question, when I got the settlement check, I invested the whole settlement check into the studio. The one that we're talking about is mm-hmm. worth nothing now. Mm-hmm. But I invested it all. Of course, my mom and all of them were like, "Well, don't you know?" But for me, I, man, I'm finna buy this studio. I'm finna get my uh, 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 three months rent paid ahead of time. I'm finna buy the studio and save about four hundred dollars for liquor and weed. <laughs> and I'm good. I'm finna sell this studio time, make this movie, and get, you know what I mean? And go get this bread. <laughs> it just didn't, you know, but, um, but but as far as my mom, you know, my mom ain't never, never not been behind me. Right. Him, his mom, his sister, ain't never not one second ever, even when I was, even when I was dead ass wrong. They're gonna tell me I'm wrong, but they ain't never gonna not be so that, like, you know, that's why. It's a strong foundation. That's a yeah, good that's thing. Right. It's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Well, gentlemen, it's almost time to wrap up. T-Bones, I, I, I said that I would give you an opportunity. If yeah. there's anything you want to talk about that I didn't mention, please let it let it go. Let us know. We would love to hear from you. Besides the rappers that I grew up listening to, I'm a big fan of Stephen Hawking. He didn't let his disability keep him from doing what he loved. It may have taken his muscles, but it didn't take his brain, and I could relate to that. Another big inspiration would be my mom. She's the strongest person that I know. Mm -hmm. She's been through a lot raising two kids on her own. Currently, we're still working on the ILL album, we kinda had to put it on hold because life happens. Yeah. Mike just got a new job so it's harder finding the time to record his parts. We do have six good mixes that we recorded. I just feel like it needs at least four more tracks to feel complete. In meantime we released two singles to get our name out there. The first one is called Why You Mad, which is a banger we both went off on that one. The second single is called Testing Me. I think it's the best song that we've done so far. My verse on it may be the most powerful that I wrote. I'm currently working on my fifth album right now. I'm planning on calling it The Return of the One-Armed Swordsman. Mm. It's a call back to the original track from my first album. I'm shooting for 16 tracks on this one. It may Mm. take a while, but I might put out a single to promote it. I'm attempting to make the album clean without any cussing. Method Man inspired me to do so, because he hasn't cussed Mm. on an album in 10 years. All of my music and ILL music is on all digital platforms. Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, Apple Music. If you buy any music from iTunes it would really help us out. That's where we get more royalties I noticed. Just search T-Bones for my music. And search I period L period L period for the ILL music. People can find me on Facebook. Just search T Bones Martinez. That's where I promote most of my stuff. I'm on Instagram also. 
My handle is tbones underscore martinez. I usually just do the reels with my music. I'm on TikTok at tbones martinez. I've been getting a hand on using that app. I have a Twitter under tbones martinez. I just use tbones martinez for the social media stuff. But my actual artist name is just T Bones. Mm, yep, yeah, and I can vouch for it. I found uh, What If and some of Ill's music on Spotify. It's real easy. If you search T Bones, T B O N E Z, you'll find all of T Bones' music and all of Ill's music right out there in the streaming world. But like he said, if you really want to. Be a true fan. Go to uh, iMusic. Go to Apple Music and buy something, because that's where we get the most money when you actually buy a product. And um, if you get a chance to see Ill or and or Fat Mike T Bones out doing their thing live, it's an incredible show. It's striking. You'll remember it. It'll be inspirational and motivational to you. It should be a call to all artists to work harder. Um, and uh and and follow your craft follow your spirit speak your mind um i feel for you t-bones it must be incredibly frustrating uh uh, i know everybody doesn't realize uh the the clarity of your mind and how and how incredible you are with the words but that's why mike and i are going to help get the word out to the world and to people so that they will find out your music and be inspired um you know, and his visions for you performing or your songs playing at the Special Olympics mm-hmm. or the Olympics or anywhere uh, is a very big dream that I think can come true. I, I don't see any reason why not. Uh, I feel like that's the perfect situation. And um, I really appreciate both you guys coming in tonight. Fat Mike, before we go, is there anything you want to add, you want to say? Shout out. First of all, let me do this. For your, for, for your mom, both of you's moms. Give a round of applause. For all the moms out there, it's tough being a mom. Single mother. And I can tell that both of your moms worked very hard. You, you, you're a complete gentleman, and you've been great. And uh, so a salute to the mothers and salute to cousins, friends, brothers. The relationship you two have, I have with my big brother. I understand that. It's a special thing. We look out for each other. And... Um, the passion that Mike has about you and your career is very special. I respect that. I appreciate that. And it's obvious to hear him talk about you. I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Is there anything you want to add? I'm... No. You know what? I just I documented everything. Okay. You want to go check my paperwork Good. out? You want to go look at my prison stuff? You want to ask around? You know, you could, you could uh, my colleague, all that. You could look at his documented. Uh, I was struggled. I was broke. I never made nothing. I lost all my life. We're still in the same spot. But now watch. Yeah, now that's what it's getting I'm ready to coming. turn around big. Mike's home. Up. Ill is recording. They're getting ready to have brand new songs. They got six mixed in the can. They got four more to go. They're going to drop this Ill project on you. It's been our pleasure having both of you gentlemen down here tonight. Thank you. Um, is there anything else, T-Bones, before we get out of here you want to drop on us? You let me know. Uh, this has been the mission Tuesdays, every other Tuesday at 8 p.m. here at AZMT. That's Arizona Mixtapes. Go ahead. Oh, feel free. Feel free. Please. <laughs> T-Bones, ladies and gentlemen, with Fat Mike, also known as Ill. Together they're Ill. Pay attention, man. It's going to be it's gonna be different. All the promoters out there, 867, AZMT, Daryl, uh, Daron, uh, y'all just need to tap in and get ill on the bill. Uh, you know what I mean? You, it's really a great addition to your show. So tap in with these brothers and let them do the thing. Whenever you're ready, T-Bones. I'm just killing time. I'll shut up when it gets going. <clears throat>
Half man, half machine, what you gonna do when we step in the scene? Trap you in my guillotine, I'm so sick with the lyrics, I need a vaccine, fuck some bling, all I need is a mic to do my thing, babe Ruth status, I'm the king of swing, I caught onto your little scheme, go hard or go home is my theme, I rock the spot from here to Beijing, I'm the voice to the microphone like Mean Gene. All I need is one shot survival skills like buckshot spit fire like a gun glock leave your bell rocked after this one you better keep your head banging like slipknot. Wherever I go I murder mics flipping tracks like I was flipping dykes I'm the microphone killer you're fucking with a bareback gorilla wearing you out like chinchilla give me the mic and I'll show you who's iller snatch your heart to kill you quicker your family better pour out some liquor watch us plague the rap game just like smallpox murder everyone in the room and the beat just stops. Mm. Ah, that's ill. You got ill lines. You on them like a gorilla. I, I heard this. I can't. My memory's mm. bad because I smoke too much weed. But man, that's incredible. Let's give a round of applause for the special freestyle, mission freestyle, giving us a real treat. And it's always a treat when real hip hop meets. Man, I can just tell it. Y'all breathe it. I can tell that you just love this sport, this game called hip hop so much. And, you know, it's your expression. You know, that's the beauty of it. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to the mission. It's been our pleasure to talk to you. We're going to get some clips you, out this week and get some promo going so everybody knows and understands the mission of ill. That's Fat Mike, T-Bones, T-Bones Martinez everywhere on social media, the mission everywhere on social media. Thank you to everybody that tuned into the show. We'll be broadcasting this all week, and it'll be jumping up on YouTube and Spotify, Apple Music Podcasts, everywhere the show's podcast within a few days. Thanks to Kid K, Queen D, everybody here at AZMT, the wonderful Arizona Mixtape Studios. It's been another episode of The Mission, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And good night. Cha-cha-cha-cha. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. We out. Oh, for real, bro.